It's an assassin bug. He's coming to assassinate us. I don't, nope, not today. Hello, people on the internet. I am in Texas today because I'm here to drive the all new Toyota Tundra. The one I grabbed is all brown. Brown on the outside, brown on the inside. It's kind of cool how they did the 1794 on this mattified bronze font. It's pretty. I spent most of my morning driving around in this very truck right here is a 1794 edition 4x4. But as far as the looks go, I'm not really gonna focus on the stuff you guys have eyes and can see on your own. I like the front end of the new Tundra. It kind of reminds me of the 4Runner when it got redesigned. It's very predator. I'm gonna eat your baby look to it. Okay, first up, wheel and tire spec on this 1794 edition. So these come with some 20s on there. And these uh, Bridgestone Dueler HTs don't really look like they're up for too much off-roading. But it still does have a four-pot caliper. That's kind of cool. So some of these trucks, depending on what model you choose, like the 1794 behind me, have adaptive suspension. Yeah, electronic dampers in a truck. And what's even more weird, if you look underneath here, at that solid rear axle, which does have electronic locking rear diff, is that there's no leaf springs underneath here anymore. It's a multi-link. So just like it's Taco Brotherin down there, the new Tundra has a composite bed as well. I am a fan of this because I grew up in New Hampshire where everything rots and rusts. So you can say what you will about capacities and such, but let's face it, 99% of the people that are gonna buy this truck are never gonna use it as a truck and I'm a fan of things not rotting out. Let's get a power inverter. These rings right here. You're welcome for that joke. I like the fact that it has Tundra embossed in the tailgate, and if you get a TRD Pro Edition, it actually says TRD Pro in the sheet metal instead of Tundra. All right, first things first. The inside of this truck. We're gonna make this quick, because there's plenty of journalists here covering, I'm sure, the interior of this truck over and over again. So you're gonna get my perspective on life. The 1794 edition is the fine crafted Texas barbecue sauce edition of all the tundras. Stuff like this right here. How Texas is that? And I'm pretty sure that's real wood. I'd set it on fire for you, but I don't think they'd like that. If you're looking for a luxurious truck that has something unique to it, this is it. This is the one right here. This one stands out to me the most. That's why I'm driving it. Actually, I didn't really have a choice. I just grabbed the first truck that was available. This is an absolutely gorgeous interior in this truck. I love the brown on brown on brown. Everything. Brown wood grain, brown leather, brown paint. That's a good size back seat. Ooh, heated and ventilated. I swear I had television sets smaller than this when I was growing up. This infotainment system is enormous. Obviously you can get it on the top trim specs, not the base model, but this is crazy and it's smart too. Watch this. Hey Toyota. What do you want to do? Tell me a funny joke. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding you. A lot of people do. Don't expect to have in-depth passionate conversations with your Tundra. There's USB, USB-C, uh, AC power inverter. That feels like real wood also. That's nice. What would you put inside there? Business cards, cucumber slices. Back glass still goes down power as it should. It's a Tundra. There's all kinds of stuff down here. You got cooled seats, heated seats, up fitter switches, cameras, trailer stuff. You can manually put down your rear window. You can charge your notepad in the wireless charge pad. I got shades? Okay, this is excessive. This is excessive. This is something you would think you'd see in like a BMW 7 Series a long time ago. I'm sorry, I'm not that high society. A massive hole cut out in the roof. Ah, looks like the cousin goofballs have been getting into mountain climbing. Unfortunately, there was no SR base model here for me to go over. And there was a couple TRD off-road versions, but all the gentlemen's have snagged those up. In the name of science, I am going to give this thing the beans. Down here in the center console, there's multiple drive modes you can go through. You can go from eco, comfort to normal, sport S, sport plus, and then custom. I'm gonna disable trash control with this little upfitter switch, give it a little assistance, and let it eat. Ready? Go. 
Ooh, lots of wheel spin. Jeez, this thing's got a ton of torque. shifts okay that's good man this thing is quick it just wants to roast the tires off the back too there that was a ton of buttons all right let's pop the hood look underneath here Ooh, hood struts nice touch anyway here is the new twin turbski v6 it's a 3.4 liter despite toyota trying to make it seem like this is a 3.5 this is 3444 cc's that rounds down to 3.4. So this engine's code name should be Victor 34 Alpha Foxtrot Toyota sales pitch. So this new Victor 35 Alpha FTS makes 389 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 479 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. That's a fucking sh ton of torque down low. Now here's the thing. This is a massive truck and it's only a 3.4 liter V6. So if you look where the engine actually starts, if you come back, that's almost center line on the front axle. I mean, look at the front. Look at this space right here just by all these heat exchangers. But it's not cramped in this engine bay. I don't think it'd be too, too bad to work on this thing. I take this engine cover off. Oh, I certainly can. It looks like someone else had it off and it wasn't on all the way. That's awesome. Oh, check that out. There's an air to water heat exchanger right up here. That's cool. Top mount intercooler. You can see one of the banks is three cylinders right here. It does have a plastic valve cover. I mean, it's 2022. That's pretty standard practice now. It's interesting the routing of the plumbing though for your turbos. So you can see there's individual charge pipes, one for each bank of three cylinders that go dual inlet into that charge cooler. There's the ECU right next to the air box. Now here's the thing. There's another additional engine that you can get in this. It's a hybrid version of this twin turbo V6 that makes 437 horse and 589 pound feet of torque. 589. It's time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? Ooh! There goes all my camera equipment. Oh, there goes all my cameras. Good brakes. Aggressive brakes, very aggressive brakes. I'm standing in a lawn right now, obviously not in my garage. So it's kind of impossible for me to pick this thing up and stick it in the tree so we can look underneath it. Well, this is kind of tricky to do without a lift, but right there you can see the transmission pan for the 10 speed automatic. That is the only transmission choice you have on this truck. And right behind it, you can see the transfer case. Ew, it's a big ass muffler. That thing's huge. I think I'm getting, there's ants crawling on me. I'm pretty sure I need to get out of here. I just switched trucks. I'm in another brown 1794 edition. I wanted to keep with the theme. I actually didn't plan it at all. It's just, that was what was there. Anyway, this one has the TRD off-road package. So it's got the locking diff, the crawl control, train management, a grasshopper on the hood. This would not be my choice for off-roading. There is a big grasshopper on the hood. Wait, no, it's an assassin bug. It's an assassin bug. He's coming to assassinate us. I don't, nope, not today, Satan. Hi. How you doing? Good. So I got a little rock crawl here for you. Okay. Gonna wanna be in low range. You familiar with crawl control? I've used it in Tacoma. Yeah, so they've yeah. really refined it. It's a lot smoother now. Oh, okay. Remember how it used to be all jerky and noisy? Mm -hmm. It's not like that anymore. Okay. So if you wanna give it a shot. I'll do a little spot for you. Today. Okay. All right, foot's off the gas. Let it do its thing. Oh, that's rad. It is doing it on its own. That's so weird. I don't like, I don't like robots. I know, I get it. I just want to do it myself. It's really smooth. I know, they've refined it a lot. Yeah. Turn that dial all the way to the right, it'll speed up, bring you up the hill, or you can just drive it out. Oh, okay. I'll drive it. Awesome, thanks. That is super smooth. But that takes the fun out of off-roading though. I don't want robots doing the work for, for me. That made it idiot-proof. All right, this big screen is coming in clutch for off-roading. 
This thing is huge. I like how it's got the telemetry down there on the bottom also. The one thing I wanna to see Toyota do though, is make a stripped down off-road model. Just like rubber flooring, vinyl seats, maybe like cloth, some durable cloth. Now Toyota in their parts catalog has an optional lift kit that you can get. So take the TRD Pro mechanical bits, add that lift kit, stick it on an SR model with all the electronic gadgets that this thing has and call it the TRD Bro. I feel like this is a fairly fresh trail. There's a chicken coop, I think. There might be some chickens over there. I have not. No, you're not. Okay, all right. So you're gonna go through the logs here and then articulation just after? Okay. These are cautious robots. They're very cautious. I would have just kind of yeeted it through this area. There. <laughs> ah, lift. If I'm not anything, I'm definitely resourceful. So now you can get a look at the underside of this truck. You are welcome, internet. So there you go. There's the undercarriage of the new Tundra. It's a fully boxed frame. You see there's quite a few skid plates on this TRD off-road model. Stainless steel exhaust. And then there's your upgraded dampers. Hmm, they're red. It looks like it's a unique Bilstein damper just for this truck. I was expecting to see the yellow body or some 5100s under here but they're red. You can get a good look at a truck's ass by sticking your head up its frame, but I'd rather take the factory's word for it. And what I mean by that is, this is part of my tour of the Toyota Tundra factory where they actually manufacture the frames. So here is a full shot of what the frame under this truck looks like and how they build it. And they, I mean robots. And on top of robots, they actually have autonomous forklifts here. That was a highlight of the entire tour. Basically, the Cliff Notes version of what's going on here is these robots are laser welding together pieces of varying thickness steel to make one whole fully boxed frame. All right, just like I do on my other channel, I'm gonna do a little bit of a one take for the driving impression of this thing. I'm not Matt Farah, and I'm not very good at speaking, so. I'll do my best at making this make any sense whatsoever. So, so um, dude, listen to that. Oh, I don't know if the camera picked it up. You can hear the turbo spooling. It's subtle, it's just a little I like that. I did notice in the drive out here, this 10 speed automatic when you're just giving it partial throttle accelerating, it shifts so smooth and so quickly, it was like bouncing within maybe 100 or 200 RPM, like right around just below 2000 RPM. It was just going through all the gears, almost like CBT-ish, very smooth. What I personally have been averaging fuel economy wise on mostly highway is 16.7. Uh, but this thing definitely has quite a bit of bean. It's got some meaty bean down low and this isn't even the hybrid version. And I don't know if it's a little bit of fake sound generation that they pump into this thing. It's almost like it's trying to mask the sound of the fact that it's a twin turbo V6. I know a lot of people are gonna be bummed out that this doesn't have a V8 in it but here's the thing like I understand when you're dealing with Ford, Chevy, and Dodge that have a long lineage of V8s in the past with their full-size trucks. I can see how some people would be a little bit disappointed. But when I think of Toyota, I think of six cylinders and four cylinders and forced induction. It's, that to me just, it fits more to have a twin turbo V6 in this truck than it would like an EcoBoost and an F-150. But here's the question. Will this thing last a million miles like you can get with a naturally aspirated V8? I mean, think of how fast a turbo spins at. These things don't last a million miles. I'm sorry, but I, I highly doubt there's a turbo out there that'll last a million miles. Maybe on like a semi truck or a big rig on a diesel. But even still, 
I I don't know if we'll get the same longevity out of this engine. Toyota does build their stuff overkill as always, but I guess only time will tell. And big thanks to Toyota for sending me out to Texas to get to experience this all new Tundra and make this video for all of you. I hope to have one here soon in Arizona to do a full review and give it a bean score. Thanks for watching. Bye.